you found yourself in a dark place in life and things weren't going your way and then you decided to do something about it could you give us a you know a few minutes on on what that was yeah well it, all my problems have been self-inflicted i come from a very privileged background i've been given a fantastic education by my parents i wasn't particularly hard working but you know let's say the end of my academic career so to speak i came out of bristol with a 2-1 in modern languages in french and portuguese i can't speak a word of french so that kind of illustrates how hard working i was as a university student and then it came to go into the real world um and since then i've learned the value of hard work because i had no money um and i've learned the value of personal responsibility because i developed an alcohol problem and those two those two things you know being completely broke and being completely addicted to booze to the extent where i put on 30 kilos where um i mean i've got we could spend the next 40 minutes just t telling you st horrendous embarrassing um and ridiculous stories from my drinking days so so my alcohol problem and the fact that i needed to take personal responsibility and make some money um have con have contributed to me turning my uh, life around you know having to fix these problems so you know i i wouldn't say that I, I suffer from any sort of disadvantage in life quite the reverse you know it's self-inflicted problems that i've had to solve but i've recognized that and you know i'm very glad that i have i have done that rather than coasting or continuing um with with these issues that can essentially destroy a life and alcohol destroys many lives i know that from my family um i've got something like five uncles and one auntie who have all died of cirrhosis of the liver my dad died alcohol related my dad was in a car on halloween when i was six or seven years old with his best friends both drunk his mate was driving, but his mate had the sense to put his seatbelt on. My dad didn't. My dad went straight, went straight through the windscreen when he hit the lamppost. Um, so alcohol in lots of lots of different ways kills lots of people. So it's not just a source of the liver. It's suicide. You no, know, most male suicide, they're drunk when they do it. Uh, violence, you know, alcohol. If someone invented alcohol today, it would never get a license to be produced and sold. Yeah, that's... I would say that that's very true. I, I I find it confusing to me. I mean, I know a lot of people would disagree with me, but I do find it confusing that people are pushing for, for drugs and stuff to be legalized as well. You know, I, I don't think, and this is a bit of a, a, a tangent, but I don't think, you know, I agree with you. If alcohol was marketed afresh, probably it wouldn't be licensed and sold, but I don't think the answer to all, all of the problems with alcohol is the legalization of drugs. You know, I've just been in America and in town centers, in places full of children, there are people just smoking drugs everywhere, smoking weed. I, like, I don't think that is, you know, that feel, that doesn't feel like a, it feels like a, a third world by walking around like sh shopping malls and outside cafes in the morning and, and, and you've got the stench of drugs everywhere um that's come because the progressive left have spent decades telling us that every every lifestyle is as valuable as everybody else's lifestyle so how dare you judge those people smoking crack at eight in the morning next to children how dare you judge them if they want to do that well that's their free choice and maybe they're doing that because of the capitalist system and the white man has been holding them down and persecuting them. So we keep giving broken people the opportunities and the responsibility to kill themselves and it's suicide. I've done a lot of work with the homeless in Manchester and I say to people all the time, if somebody was sat outside, you know, Tesco's in the city centre with a sign saying, I'm saving up to buy a knife to slash my wrists, would you give them money? And they go, no. But when he sat outside Tesco's with a sign saying, can you spare a few coins? And you give him money and he spends that on drugs that are slowly killing him over years. You give him money. So 
why why are you against quick suicide but not slow suicide and it's because we've been fashioned now to believe that every lifestyle is exactly the same um, I've got so many opinions and views on the drug trade in the UK, but I think that's a discussion for another day. Let's let, let me follow up that with a question to you. Was there a specific moment when you were drinking too much, when you went, things need to change, or was it a gradual process? It was quite a gradual process, but there were two moments. First of all, in 2015, you know, bo boozing started at uni. And I've got loads of great memories of boozing at uni, meeting my fiance Debs um and uh and so many amazing friends and stuff so it's not like i'm writing off all the drinking years is terrible but there was a bit of a shift when i started my six-week career as an accountant uh which i resigned from i was drinking really heavily then um and i didn't know like how i was going to make any money i couldn't really hack it in an office which i'm still kind of ashamed of because it's like if you can't hack it in an office if you don't have the discipline to work in an office then what sort of a person are you? But I, I realized that I wasn't finding that fulfilling. And I started my clothing brand and, and things professionally have, have moved since since then. But but oh, so the first kind of turning point was 2015. Um, after a couple of years since uni, I had had many horrendous occasions with drinking, you know, ne nearly drinking myself to death or or being attacked and uh, falling down the stairs at Slough Station and having to have my knee stitched up by paramedics, all sorts, all manner of incidents that should have been um, a, an epiphany. But there was a, a, a time at the end of 2015 where I said, I want to give up booze. And that was after I drank 20 cans of Stella um, on a Sunday. And the, the hangover that I had after that was just, like, it was so so awful i thought i was just gonna die of alcohol poisoning uh, i don't know why i didn't go to hospital but i thought maybe i could i don't know um but th the whole thing from that and i called some friends i said i'm gonna give up drinking uh, of course a few days later i was in a karaoke bar really really drunk again um but th so that was the first kind of time and by that stage you know i i, I was quite overweight um, my finances were in a mess, despite the fact I was making good money from my entrepreneurial exploits. I was spending it all and more. My, you know, You'd already started the clothing brand by then. I'd already started my clothing brand by then. So so, so sobriety and entrepreneurship um, have, have gone hand in hand um, for me in some ways. Um, I guess without the entrepreneurship, I started the entrepreneurship because I was like, I don't want to work in an office as an accountant and I want to drink. So I started the entrepreneurship, had some success, but ruined all the success because I had a drinking problem. Yeah, exactly. And in the end, my love of finally like having some respect for myself, that won over my laziness and over my addiction. So in 2017, um, I, I, I mean, this, th th it's not even like the wor worst drinking story by any stretch of the imagination, but it was. Uh, I went to the 60th birthday of Debs, my fiance. Um, her father was having a 60th birthday party. And I basically, I, I'd i never really showed the sort of, um, you know, disgraceful side of my personality to the, to the in-laws, so to speak. So they saw me absolutely plastered. We'd got, gone to this really nice restaurant, like a private room and everything. And I was just there, like not saying a word, so drunk, just picked up my entire pudding um with a fork and ate it in like one mouthful and that you know thinking that I was funny but actually I was just being a dickhead um and um and then when I woke up the next day you know I just felt so ashamed of myself so the, there have been way more dangerous drinking stories but that was the one oh, so October the 13th 2017 um I just decided to take it day by day give up drinking um and uh and so that was the the moment um where where i took some accountability for my drinking but it's been it's been, yeah it's been two stages like the first stage was was discovering hard work uh, but kind of wrecking it with with alcohol and you know alcohol. well at that point then you thought you could do both you thought oh, yeah you thought i can carry on drinking because look how clever i am i'm now 
I've set up a clothing brand company and I'm making money. Look how clever I am. I can drink and do that. But, but the fact is I was worse. I was worse than if I hadn't set up the clothing brand at all because my alcohol problems, meaning that despite the fact I could get in the papers, despite the fact I could get on TV and despite the fact I could make lots of sales, I would have been better off staying at home and living on the doll financially because my net worth was minus six figures at any one point I, I like and when i was hung over i would be so anxious about the situation that i would be in i would feel like i was green i would feel like my stomach was like turning in, into knots because as well as that you know when i was a young man at uni when i was drinking uh heavily i used to take out wonga loans payday loans to fund big big wild exploits and um and so, you know, I, I couldn't get a loan from the bank 